Hey guys, Russ Ness back here once again at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle. Today I've got a review here for you on a product that you are not going to want to miss, and that is not an exaggeration. This is one of the coolest new products I have seen. Uh, just when you think you've gotten everything to tie flies, something comes out like this. A lot of what you see is an improvement on an old tool, but for me this is essentially a brand new tool that allows you to do some really cool things. And I don't know about you, but I'm not Pat Cohen as much as I wish I was. Uh, my deer hair stacking, spinning, and cutting skills are limited. So uh, a tool like this you're going to find is extremely helpful for you. And we're going to talk a little bit about it, and then I'm going to show you uh, what this puppy can do in action. Uh, by the way, if you can settle uh, the debate as to whether it's stone foe or, or, or stone foe, please, please let me know because I have no idea which one it really is. So out of the package, the uh, the tool, it's uh, uh, stone foe. All their stuff is extremely, uh, extremely well built, well machined. This is no exception. Uh, so what this does, uh, if you haven't uh, seen it before, is it holds a, a safety razor blade, a double-edged safety razor blade, and these were once upon a time used to shave, they still can be, it's a great way to shave if you've never done it. Uh, the, uh, the product, ex uh, excuse me, the product itself does come with a package of safety razor blades, um, but any safety razor blade will fit into this tool um, and using it is extremely easy. I know there was a product uh, on the market a while ago that basically kind of had a similar function and I don't know much about that product but uh, this product is exceptional. So basically uh, inserting the razor blade is is not a difficult task. There's there's two prongs here, and on a on a traditional double-edged safety razor blade, you just insert those two notched edges into the slots here on the tool, and then in this position here, it's holding your safety razor blade flat. And what I, I really like about this tool is that if you're someone like me who has shaky hands, ties with shaky hands, or, or has a little bit of trouble uh, controlling, uh, you know, tying, essentially using a, a, a double-edged safety razor blade to cut spun deer hair or stacked deer hair is not something new. Guys have been doing it for a while and using it in your hand can be difficult uh, just because they're so flexible and they are built uh, to to be that way because they're a shaving product but when it comes to actually tying flies that can be detrimental if you want to get a really even cut to some portion of your fly uh, so what strikes me about this product that I really like and I've been using it for a couple days now is that your razor blade is extremely secure uh, just in those notches. So when you're, when you're going in and making cuts, you do not have to worry at all about your razor blade popping out. You don't have to worry about while you're cutting your razor blade bending, uh, which would be uh, detrimental to something if you're doing a straight cut. Um, the, the grip on this is, uh, what's nice about it is that it's, it's got good weight to it. So when you're gripping here and cutting, you have so much control over, uh, over those cuts you're making, uh, as opposed to gripping your blade here and doing this. Uh, it's just, in my opinion, it's, it, I think it's really kind of a game changer for folks like me that have trouble cutting deer hair. Now, what makes this product even cooler is the fact that if you spin it, uh, this upper portion of the handle counterclockwise, 
you can get varying degrees of a semicircular cut. So uh, now with that, with that, uh, and basically what's happening there, and I don't know the internal components here, but I think it has to do with the spring, and it basically, as you turn that, it, it pushes these together. And now you've got uh, a semicircular blade held perfectly in place. And of course, you can do this with your fingers, but doing it with a tool like this uh, is, uh, gives you a great advantage because as you're making those cuts, that, of course, that blade stays exactly in that position. You don't have to worry about it bending even more, bending less as the cut proceeds. It just it stays the way it is. So anywhere from that flat cut to varying degrees of a semicircular cut, uh, you're going to be able to do some really cool things. Uh, you know, cutting um, anywhere from just basic uh, muddler heads, any type of deer hair head, uh, drunken disorderly wedge heads. Uh, you know, this thing's application is huge and it really simplifies, uh, I think, the process of cutting hair for, for, like I said, folks that maybe have a little trepidation in doing it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get some puffballs out on the table here, and I'm going to show you what this thing can do in action. All right, guys, uh, let's see what this puppy can do. Now, bear with me. Like I said previously, I'm, I'm not the best at stacking, stacking or spinning deer hair. I'm also not the best at cutting it, but with this tool, we're just going to show you real briefly how how it works, what you can do with it. I'm going to start off with this is just a puff ball of deer hair. That's all it is, and we're going to try to fashion sort of a wedge shape head, uh, a la like what you would see on a a, uh, a drunk uh, drunk and disorderly pattern. If you've never seen that pattern. Please go check it out, tie it. It's that thing dances in the water, and it's primarily because of the head shape. It's kind of a wedge head shape, so it's uh, suited perfectly for the the flat position of this uh, of this tool. Uh, so uh, what, one one other caveat about uh, using this tool: it's so important you use a sharp blade. Uh, if you don't you're just not going to get the cuts you want uh, and that blade's going to start to drag and I think at that point it could come out of the tool but that is simply because the blade's dull. You never want a dull blade when you're doing this kind of work. One, one other interesting thing I thought about was that when I would traditionally use these blades to cut deer hair, you, you use one, three days later you don't know which side you use to cut the hair so with this you can stash it away and then simply flip the blade around and you know you've got a fresh side. So we'll just kind of try to get sort of a wedge-shaped cut here. Sometimes a little bit of a sawing motion will assist you here. The drunken disorderly pattern, it's a broad wedge-shaped head. As you can see, I've got a lot of control here, a lot of control in my, in my right hand using this blade. It's just so effortless doing this. And this is just purely uh, with this blade flat, not having any issues with the blade bending or catching or anything of that nature. And just do a straight push. If you've got a sharp blade and you push through, it's going to cut. Guys use a lot of different methods when they're cutting deer hair. You got to kind of find your own style. You got the start of a wedge shape there. This is one of the messiest, uh, absolute messiest things you can embark upon in fly tying but once you start doing it you're gonna love it yeah. 
Now the the blades themselves, they you know, I'm not gonna lie, when you're cutting real thick clumps of hair, they they do go dull quick. Uh, so if you're noticing that your blades catching or not cutting, you just got to get swapping a new one or turn it around, uh, which is not a big deal. The blades are uh, quite cheap, and you can buy the blades um, separately here in the shop. You can also find them elsewhere. Of course, come on in, buy them here, give her some moolah. All right, so you can see I'm basically I'm just using this. And I'm just it's just it's really F, this is this this tool is so cool. I've done a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a, I've tried to do a lot of uh, D and uh, D and D heads or drunken disorderly heads and man they, you know they're not easy to do but. I'm telling you, with this puppy, I think it's going to become something that uh, you can learn to do quickly. So there's an application of it uh, with the blade straight. Let's pop in something else here. And even bigger puff. Flip the blade around here so we get a fresh edge. Alright, now let's turn this thing and see what we can do with it. So I could definitely see guys using this for shaping up bass bugs and you know you want to get a real even, uh, you know the advantage here is that you get a real even cut along all sides so let's just kind of dive in here. I mean, come on, look at that. That is so cool. It's just, I mean, one cut. This thing is just so neat. And this is, this is a pretty thick clump of hair here. And this blade is not budging a bit. It's held so securely in there. These are, these are the kind of bugs that will drive your significant other or wife nuts. You're going to be tracking deer hair everywhere. Alright, so, you know, theoretically, for, you know, this, this is just an extreme demonstration of what that uh, bent, the bent feature of this can do, but I, I honestly do not believe that I could accomplish this even of a cut with that blade in my two fingers doing it. Uh, I know that other guys can. Pat Cohen, shout out to you, man. You're the master. Um, but for, for guys like me, this thing is just so cool. I can't wait to take it home um, and play around with it. But as you can see, you're able to get round cuts with such extreme precision and, e and, and evenness with the, the assistance of that handle. Uh, it's all well controlled. Um, and, you know, basically for, for what you're getting here, it's, it's reasonably priced in my opinion. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd say if you do any deer hair work at all, come in the shop, check it out. Um, and uh, until next time, guys, uh, I'll see you then.